Thank you, thank you. Okay, that means a lot. Thanks so much, everybody. Welcome to the Ballistic Report. I am your town to host Ike Moore, and this is the show where we break down pop culture. And man, this is a good weekend. This is what I like to call a Tracy Morgan weekend. As I'm recording this, we are hours away from him returning to Saturday Night Live with musical guest Demi Lovato. And this has been a long time coming for the guy. I mean, it was only a year and a half ago that he was in a tragic accident that not only left him critically injured, but killed his best friend, Jimmy Mack. But through great determination and his support from his wife and kids, he is now back on his feet and ready to get back to work. Not only is he a funny guy, but he's also an inspiration for anyone going through that, especially with the whole Lamar Odom situation that happened this week. And while we wish him a speedy recovery, Tracy is proof that you can fight through anything and get back to where you once were. Now while I enjoy hearing myself be positive, unfortunately we have some very odd stories this week. So without further ado, let's get started, shall we? Now since we're talking about Saturday Night Live, NBC announced that hosting the November 7th episode will be none other than the presidential candidate Donald Trump. Now let me stress this, I'm a big fan of Saturday Night Live, I will continue to watch it for as long as it airs, and I have no beef with Donald Trump at all. That being said, this is a bad decision. I mean think about it, if you strip away all the politics... This guy's not funny. This guy's never been funny. In fact, the last time he hosted this show was one of the worst episodes I've ever seen because he played himself in every sketch. That's breaking one of the Ten Commandments of sketch comedy. You only play yourself in one or two sketches, not throughout the whole show. But you know what? I'm looking forward to this. I want to see how they're going to pull this off. How are they going to take this guy who, while he's leading the polls, isn't exactly everyone's favorite candidate. How are they going to make him likable for at least 90 minutes on a Saturday night? That's going to be a test. And I'm sure they'll find a way, but I can just see myself shaking my head throughout the whole show. Now, this next story will take up the rest of this episode. And I'm not going to go into spoilers, so just bear with me. Now, it has come to my attention that some of the hardcore Empire fans have been complaining about the quality for the past few weeks. They're talking about how it might get cancelled soon and how it's not the same as it once was last season. Now, before I go into this, I want everybody to just calm down, take deep breaths, and let Uncle Ike put this all in perspective. First of all, it's important to remember, this show is still number one on Wednesdays. The ratings might have gone down by just a tiny bit of percent, but this show is still number one. And in my opinion, and I say this and I stand by it, it's still a great show and it's impossible for it to be bad. Look at all the talent you have. You have Terrence Howard, Taraji P. Henson, and you have all these young actors. So how can this show be bad? It's impossible. All that being said, I'd be lying if I didn't somewhat agree. I do think some of the quality has gone down just by a slight inch. My main problem with the show is that I feel that sometimes it relies too much on celebrity cameos. I think if you do that, you lose focus on what the show is about. My worry is if we get a star like Beyonce on the show it's no longer empire it's the beyonce show because everybody's going to be wondering when she's going to show up and if she doesn't show up in a long enough role then they're going to be complaining on twitter you know how 2015 people work hey you don't want me sylvester stallone to show up on empire because uh i'll tell lucius uh that he needs to fight anyone who's against him and uh he has to keep moving forward adrian And if Kevin Hart shows up, forget about it. It's going to be a whole hour of, Hey, uh, uh, Lucius, uh, here's the thing. Uh, I don't think Cookie uh, understands how you roll. You know what I'm saying? And You don't want that. You want to prevent that. So focus more on your characters and less on celebrity cameos. 
Now, I may sound like a hypocrite here, but follow me on this. What I'd like to see is what if one episode something goes down at Empire, like a murder or something like that, and they have to call in someone from Miami. That would be Rosewood, which is the show that airs before Empire. And you have Morris Chestnut go on Empire and help them solve what's going on. Now, this cameo makes sense because you do two things here. One, you help promote Rosewood, which is while it's doing good, it's still, you know, it's a new show. It's still trying to find its audience. So you help them out. And at that same time, you're also promoting the new Best Man movie because you have both Terrence Howard and Morris Chestnut on the same show. And let's be honest, what lady doesn't want to see that on their television? So when it comes to Empire, I hear you guys, I understand, we'll just see how everything goes. Also, I would like to point out that uh, Morris Chestnut is uh, my long-lost brother, in case you haven't figured that out. And that will do it for another edition of the Ballistic Report. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Remember, we're trying to get 50 subscribers by the end of 2015, and I have a feeling we're going to get there. I can just feel it. Spread the word as often as you can, and let's grow this audience. All of my social media outlets are in the description box below. And until next week, I've been your talented host, Ike Moore, reminding you it's okay to be ballistic as long as it's done responsibly. Good night, Internet.